Well, and Alexandra Smith joins me now, Executive Director at America Rising and an attorney as well. Alex, thanks a lot for taking the time. Thanks so much for having me. So, what do you expect to see from the president in his first State of the Union address tomorrow night? Well, we've gotten some hints from the White House about what we can expect from the president. Um, undoubtedly, uh, he's going to be talking about a couple issues um, with, I think, touting the benefits of his hallmark piece of legislation from last year, uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Um, as we can see from various companies offering bonuses um, and increasing pay for workers, the, the Tax Cuts Act is, is working. Um, and come next month, millions of Americans are going to see a bump in their pay from their paychecks. Uh, but, you know, if you look at some of the polls, some of them are troublesome in that not many Americans realize um, that the benefits that they're getting from this, this act are coming from um, – it came from President Trump and the Republicans' efforts and were no thanks to Democrats. So I expect that he's going to highlight that um, since he has a big audience to do so tomorrow night. But I think he's also going to move into immigration um, and he's going to move into infrastructure, which is something that he's cared deeply about for a long time. Let me ask you about this, Alex. I, I kind of uh, somewhat facetiously tonight suggested that what I'd love to see the president do since he knows that some Democrat members of Congress are boycotting his speech and they're sending illegal aliens in their place, I wish the president would address them directly and at the same time address the American people and say, we know tonight that some of your Democrat members of Congress have decided to skip tonight's speech and that they've sent illegal aliens in their place. Some of those illegal aliens may end up becoming either permanent residents or even citizens, depending on what's done. But so far, the Democrats have not done the things necessary to make that happen. So, you know, kind of put it back on the Democrats, say, it's your call. The president last year announced that he was going to end DACA. It was an illegal action to begin with. So if he's going to end it and he invites the Democrats to come up with an alternate solution and they don't come up with one, then the ball's in their court. Now, I don't know if Donald Trump or his advisors want him to speak that directly to an issue, but he does have a unique opportunity. I mean, it's not the first time there have been illegal aliens in the Congress, uh, you know, during a speech. But this may be the night where we see the greatest number of illegal aliens sitting in the, you know, the, ho the House chamber listening to the president of the United States speak. Yeah, I think it's actually a terrific idea um, because highlighting their absence I think would infuriate a lot of Americans who were trying to send a signal in 2016 that they were done with politics as usual. And they weren't just saying that to Democrats, they were saying that to Republicans too. So this was, you know, the country really making a statement that we're tired of the way Washington works. We see President Trump as a change agent, and we're sending him there to get you guys in line. Um, so I think that the Democrats protesting and acting childish is a great way of pointing that out. I do think, however, what we'll see from the president's speech that will largely be positive, I, I, I would uh, assume. And I think what's really funny about the, um, about the Democrats who have chosen to, to bring dreamers um, to the State of the Union, um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because the president has, as you said, he rightfully um, rescinded the executive order, yep. um, which even if, you, if, if you're a supporter of DACA, was the wrong way to go about it because an executive order gives no certainty um, to these young men and women who are sort of living on the edge, if you will. And he threw it in Congress's court and said, Congress, I want you to come up with a legislative solution, a proper, properly done solution so that we give some certainty to these kids. Um, and the president last week, he, he unveiled what his principles will be um, in terms of providing a pathway to citizenship for these dreamers. Well, also buttressing that with strong border security. And the Democrats won't come to the table. So in reality, the president wants to make the lives of those dreamers sitting in the audience a whole lot better than the Democrats do at this point. And he wants to do it in a way that's constitutional and consistent with our system of laws. And for, the life, of me, for the life of me, I don't understand this. You know, Alex, I, you may not know this. I used to be a reporter. I did this all the time, but I was, I kept my own opinion out and I put in just the facts, but I tried to tell it down the line. And the idea that reporters are not pointing out to the public, the action that Obama took in DACA was illegal. And how do we know that? Because Obama himself called it illegal a year before he did it. And now 
This president is saying, do it the legal way. Let the Congress pass a bill, and, and then he would sign it, uh, that would change the law. If you want to change the law, change the law the way the Constitution allows the law to be changed. Don't change it by fiat, which has never been the law of the land in the United States, and is typically the law of the land in places like third world banana republics, where when you know Idi Amin says, make this so, then they make it so. If the Castro brothers say, make it so, you make it so. But in America, we have a way to pass laws in a way that you don't pass laws. And I, you would think that reporters who are so concerned about their own constitutional rights would also say, we admire a president who does it the legal way rather than doing it the illegal way. Sure. And you know what I think it does? I think it exposes uh, what the Democrats' true intentions were all along with this. Because remember um, that, you know, when President Obama started out in 2008, um, Democrats controlled everything. Um, so they could have passed a legislative fix to this early on in the Obama presidency um, that would have been constitutional and it would have been the proper way to go about it. Instead, what he did is he... he he issued this executive order, which was already a controversial uh, vehicle to, to get things done under his presidency because, as you know, he, he issued a ton of them and, in a, and, and uh, actually was uh, met with challenges in the courts over, over some of them. Um, and so, you know, he took, he, he took this issue, this precarious issue, he puts it into an executive order, which is completely unstable, for, for these young men and women that he was purporting to protect. And I think that what he was attempting to do was to have this always be a political hot potato, something that would get tossed around and that when, you know, it would come up for renewal when there would be some kind of, uh, some kind of important date or deadline that it would force the country to, to be one against the other on this issue. Alex, I'm sorry. Alex, do you think we're going to get any surprises tomorrow night? Because the president is pretty good at throwing surprises into, into events. <laughs> you know, I would not doubt it. <laughs> you know, he, he always, you know, if, if there's one thing Donald Trump knows, he knows television, right? So I think that, uh, that there's, a, there's a potential that he could, he could shake things up. And then, of course, you never know. Um, you know, if you're going to get a, a jeer or a comment from the audience, if you're going to get someone with a, you know, some kind of protest button. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think it's must-see TV. <laughs> well, it, it'll be one that we'll all be watching tomorrow night. Alex, thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. Anytime, Lars. Thank you very much. You bet. Alex Smith, who is executive director at America Rising and an attorney, talking about tomorrow night's State of the Union address.